on Newsnight Scotland tonight. Are Scotland's politicians making a meal of devolution? A report says MSPs are being distracted from making our lives better by their obsession with the Constitution and gaining more powers for Holyrood. We'll chew over the contention that devolution has failed. Good evening. Scotland's Finance Secretary used a meeting in London today to call for more powers for Holyrood in the face of UK budget cuts. Is John Swinney right when he says additional economic and financial powers are the only alternative to an unprecedented UK budget consolidation? A report from the right-leaning policy exchange says the good governance of Scotland is being strangled by the suffocating grip of constitutional arguments. In essence, the authors argue that devolution is getting in the way of government and our politicians are overly obsessed with the Parliament's powers as well as referendums and independence, all at the expense of running the country efficiently. The report was written by Tom Myers, a public policy consultant. Derek Bateman met up with him at the seat of government. So, Tom, here we are at the Scottish Parliament. I mean, you're suggesting this has failed in some way. Yes, I mean, on on any objective analysis, the performance of Scottish institutions under devolution has been extremely disappointing. What do you mean, like education, health? Yes, I mean, if you look at the key public services, for example, um, we've spent a lot of money. Um, The budget of the Scottish Government has doubled since devolution, and spending here is about 12 or 15% higher than other parts of the UK. But the performance of public services has barely improved. And in fact, if you compare them against uh, other similar countries um, to Scotland around Europe, for example, we're pretty much at the bottom of the league table on most counts. And is that the fault of devolution, if it's true? I don't think it's the fault of devolution, necessarily, but it's certainly the fault of the political elite in Scotland who have failed to address these very important issues. Um, And if you look at the economy, it's the same story. If the Scottish Government aren't getting these services right, what's the alternative method? Well, across Europe and the OECD, there are all sorts of models for delivering public services, including different ways of financing them, different ways of getting accountability. And to be fair, in Westminster, the debate about reforming the public sector has been raging for a decade. Um, But in Scotland, there's just a deafening silence. And I think that goes to the core of what the problem is that we have. The uh, argument in the Parliament is that they need more tax raising powers. In fact, they need more powers overall, as in Calman Plus. Well, if you look at the powers that the Scottish Parliament has, in fact, it has the wherewithal to make a big difference on most of the big issues, including in terms of fiscal powers. So it's almost sovereign over welfare issues like health and education, as well as things like criminal justice. And even in the fiscal arena, it controls more taxes than it would ever realistically use uh, over the next, for at least a generation. So the argument is they're not using all of these powers? That's the point. And so, um, for me, the problem in Scotland is not a constitutional one. It's not a question of a lack of powers. It must be a political one. And why would they not be using powers if they have them, the politicians? Well, you've, you've, got, to, you've got to look at the various motives for the different elements of the political elite in Scotland for but that why explanation. why would the Scottish Government do it, the people who are in now, the SNP? Well, they, the, the Scottish Government like the, the rest of the political elite, has a very conservative approach to politics in Scotland. And that's, that's, that goes to the core of the problem for me. On all the big issues, all the big domestic issues, the agenda of the SNP is exactly the same as the Labour Party. The only difference is on the Constitution. So the political dividing lines in Scotland are on the Constitution and not the issues that really matter. And that's where the problem lies. There's all sorts of problems across the UK, but what we do see is a proper recognition that things need to improve south of the border, and imaginative thinking, including importing all sorts of ideas from other European countries. Could you name one, though? You talk about tax and benefits, and there's no control over benefits in Scotland, obviously, so I mean, what, what might we mean there? Well, there is some control over benefits. If you look at um, the Scottish Government's flagship programme has been um, free care for the elderly, that's, um, that's one way in which they can impact on, on, on welfare. But the welfare state includes more than that. It's, it's health and education too. And if you take education, for example, um, both New Labour and the Tories and the Liberal Democrats have all looked at ways of reforming the education system down south, recognising that there's a problem and that schools aren't as good as they should be, and finding practical and radical ways to change things. Now here, There's an incredibly defensive attitude where there's very little recognition that there's anything wrong at all with our education system and almost no analysis of how 
people do things better in Holland or Scandinavia or elsewhere in Europe and how we can implement those best practice here. I think the education minister went to Sweden and I think Finland. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the current education minister, you know, has looked at a few options, but has there been any action since the inception of devolution? No, we're still stuck with the same model, which is essentially a very centralised approach uh, towards running both our schools and our, and our hospitals, and I think that's what needs to change. Is there a right-wing agenda? No, I don't think so. Um, you know, we're looking at all sorts of change, and it can be from any philosophical tradition. So a lot of the ideas that are coming into use in, in England actually come from social democratic countries around, around Europe. Are we lacking and a right-wing agenda in Scotland, do you think? Well, I th I th not, not necessarily. I think that the, these ideas have been adopted partly by the right in, in England and therefore to a certain extent in Scotland. But what ha what's happened is that they're rejected um, by the Scottish political elite because they come from down south and they're portrayed as being right-wing when in fact they came from places like Scandinavia in the first place.